In this video, I'm going to go over the different areas when understanding how you can cash out your 401k while still employed. And then most importantly, the five most common mistakes that individuals make are the five most important areas when trying to make this decision to either leave your money in your 401k or take your monies out and do it in a rollover or take it in the form of withdrawals. So we understand that an individual up until this point has accumulated their dollars into a 401k account. How they accumulated those dollars were by the contributions they were placing into that plan and the rate of return that was coming back. So their contributions, the employer match, and then the rate of return based on those different investment options that they chose. So when this individual starts nearing a specific age, typically age 59 and a half, and they say, hey, I do not want to stop working for this company. I still want to be working for this employer, but I want to take the money and cash it out or put it to better use for me than have it sitting in the limited funding options within the 401k. So the good thing about a 401k is typically those matching monies, those matching contributions. If someone's placing dollars in there, that employer is also giving matching monies contributing to that plan as well. The downside to it is the, is the opposite side is basically how this account grows. It could either be positive or negative based on the different investment options that that person chose. Those investment options are going to be limited when you're talking about a typical 401k. So anywhere between 10 to 25 different options that an individual can go and allocate into their 401k account is going to determine how large or how small this bucket or, or basically how often this bucket fluctuates from their rate of return side. So whenever they start getting to this qualification period, the most uh, common one is going to be their age, 59 and a half, they could take this 401k money and roll it out into an IRA or they could cash out of those dollars. Typically, it's not wise to completely cash out, meaning that you're taking it from your 401k and you're just dumping it to your checking account. If somebody does that, then they have to pay taxes on all those monies, and there might also be some sort of withholding uh, penalty for some withholding period through that employer as well. So it's usually wise, and this is where I'm going to go through the five most common areas or five most important areas to consider if trying to take these monies out of your 401k and place into IRAs and customize those IRAs towards your specific retirement planning goal. So the number one most important area is seeing if either you have a portfolio or you have a plan. When you're eligible to take monies out of your 401k, even though you're still working, and roll that over, you could create a plan, meaning create some sort of strategy and actually have some sort of goal in mind and accomplish that goal that's based on your retirement planning needs. A portfolio is essentially what I have up on the screen. It's just basically a bucket. Right now, you understand that this 401k is growing by the contributions you're placing into this plan and the rate of return that's coming back. There's no true strategy other than reallocating your different investments in there and saying, okay, I'm hoping that this thing grows. When you're eligible, you could take these monies from the 401k, roll it over, and now you have thousands of different customization options available. You could schedule different things that could put you in a better income stance when it comes time for retirement, a better growth stance, meaning rather than have the limited you know, 10 to 25 different funding options and you're trying to really accentuate your growth on this, you have thousands or hundreds of different options available. You could have a you know, lower cost. You're going to have higher, higher quality. You could be very direct with uh, really the, the portion of dollars that you're trying to accentuate that growth in. You could also scale dollars towards more of an emergency related need, more liquid cash that if you need to pull from, uh, you know, it's something that's in a non-invested position or something that's that has a fixed rate of return, but is very liquid uh, as opposed to some of the options that may only be available or may only be subject in your 401k account. So I'm going to go over some more of those details, but is it important for you to have a plan or are you satisfied with having just a portfolio? Because if you don't really know what to do and you're not willing to ask for help and you're just kind of putting in, hey, I threw some monies in here, it's you know growing, it's, it's ebbing and flowing with however well the market does and I'm satisfied with it, well, then maybe keep your money in that 401k. If you want to be strategic with your approach and really leverage your chips the best possible way, that's where you should be looking towards creating some sort of plan. Important area number two is going to be looking at your income in retirement. Be mindful what happens when somebody completely stops working. Well, then they stop generating that income from that occupation. So now they have to look underneath the hood and say, okay, well, what are my savings? What are some of my guaranteed income sources that are going to be coming to me when I stop working? And this is utilizing the calculation of income versus expenses. Understanding what your expenses are right now, what your expenses are going to be when you hit your ideal retirement age, and then are there options to leverage your existing 401k 
roll those over into IRAs so that now you could correlate your income need towards a specific strategy. Typically what happens is when an individual hits retirement age, they may be receiving income from Social Security. If they're fortunate enough, they could be receiving income from their pension plan through their employer. And then they have to look at savings to help supplement if there's a specific gap there. All three of these areas need to be greater than or equal to what their expenses are in retirement. If not, well, then they either have to reduce their expenses or they have to work more years and save up more monies. So as an example, if we understand somebody's expenses are $60,000 in a given year and they're generating $30,000 from their Social Security income, $20,000 from their pension income, and then nothing else because they do not have any more in their Social Security, their pension or uh, rental properties or anything like that. Now they have to take from their savings from their assets. This is where they could have their IRA monies, their 401k monies can help supplement what this gap is. So by making sure that you're, you're creating the proper income strategy and whenever you're eligible to take your 401k monies out, even though you're still going to be working for the next three, five, 10 years, whatever that is, once you hit that eligibility requirement, you could take your monies, preserve the correct dollar amount, place it into a customized IRA, and then have that IRA create the income needed. So in this example, $10,000 to uh, close up that gap, close up that spread off the difference between the expenses versus what their income sources are. So when we fast forward, when this person wants to retire, they know what they did, their planning steps that they did when they were eligible to cash out their 401k and roll those monies over, they were able to create some calculated moves to say, okay, when I want to retire, let's say I want to retire at age you know, 65 and I'm doing this move, I'm making this move at age 60. Okay, it required me to place X amount of dollars into my IRA at age 60, defer it for five years, and now I'm collecting this extra $10,000 from my IRA that's going to last for as long as I do, or me and my spouse does. So I'll have my, my uh, IRA that's customized for income, my pension income, my social security income, and all of those uh, three areas are going to be greater than or equal to my expenses. So that now they have all this leftover money for their emergency needs or for their growth related needs. Important area number three to consider is rising costs or are rising costs throughout your retirement. So if an individual is planning to retire and they're eligible to take the 401k and actually put it to better use than just sitting in it, think of that just random portfolio. The way that how that bucket grows in a 401k is by contributions and rate of return. It's not actually serving a specific purpose. If there's increasing costs, such as inflation and also health care, that could be a large detriment. That could be a large problem. And especially if somebody's too conservative with their monies and they're not even able to beat up the pace of inflation, it could be a detriment by sitting into that 401k account as opposed to creating some sort of strategy that's going to counteract, that's going to hedge against that inflationary rising cost or against that increasing healthcare related cost. When somebody hits 65, well, then they're most likely going to be going and hopping on Medicare, whether that be a Medicare supplement plan, a Medicare Advantage plan, and those could increase, those costs could increase each year. Another aspect or another important area to highlight are the increasing uh, health care costs is long-term care insurance, something that Medicare does not cover. Medicare supplements and Medicare Advantage plans do not cover is long-term care related expenses. So you want to make sure that you're at least creating some sort of strategy when you're eligible for that 401k to cash out and put it to better use to say, okay, when I'm retiring, let's use that example. I'm 60 right now. I want to retire at age 65. I want to make sure that when I start hitting that my, my retirement years from 65 onward, that I at least have some sort of head, some sort of strategy in place to combat that increasing cost of inflation, of everyday cost of goods and services, and also combat those healthcare related expenses, healthcare, long term care related expenses, you know, throughout my retirement. If you're just staying in a 401k that's just sitting in the portfolio, that's not actually creating a plan, you can be very strategic with incorporating that step three, most important area of rising costs. The number four most important area to consider are taxes in retirement. Understand how a traditional 401k account grows. It grows pre-tax, it's a qualified retirement account. So the monies that you're placing into the plan, they're tax deductible, it grows tax deferred. So when it comes time to start pulling out those monies for withdrawals for retirement income purposes, all those monies are gonna be fully taxable. 
so are there opportunities that you could take your monies and do something known as Roth conversions? Convert portions of the dollars or all those dollars as you're still working, but because you're eligible to roll your monies out of your 401k, you could set them up into specific strategic approaches towards Roth conversion strategies. So that what you're doing is you're taking your 401k monies, you're taking from a taxable account or, or a pre-tax qualified retirement account that you know you're gonna have to pay taxes on when you're pulling out those monies in the form of withdrawals, converting those into Roth IRA accounts so that those monies could grow tax-free and you could pull your monies out tax-free, being allowing you to net more retirement dollars without having to throw large portions, large percentages towards taxes. And it also correlates to how much that you could accentuate your Social Security dollars. Because if somebody's pulling out monies from their Roth IRA account, there, that does not include their uh, their provisional income throughout Social Security planning. So what I mean by that is Social Security income can be taxed up to 85% of what your tax bracket is on your Social Security benefit. If you're pulling out monies from Social Security, but then you're also taking monies from Roth IRA accounts or other non-qualified related accounts, uh, such as cash value plans and some different areas, it could reduce the amount of taxation on your Social Security producing a much more favorable outcome, meaning less dollars that you actually have to liquidate from your retirement accounts to make sure that you're going to correlate it to you know, what your specific expense need is. So it's very important to really understand what your tax impact will be throughout retirement and whether there's opportunity that you could do 401k to Roth conversions while you're eligible to cash out your money from your 401k, convert those into Roth monies, and just accentuate your retirement income dollars um, on some sort of uh, more strategic approach than just leaving in your 401k because your 401k could ultimately ultimately be a large tax time bomb by leaving those dollars in there. So if you're eligible, does it make sense to take those monies, roll them over, do conversions and help you out from a better mathematical standpoint? And the number five most important area is whether or not it's important to leave a legacy. If somebody's eligible to take their 401k monies and roll it over or cash out of it, can they put it to better use to leave money in the form of a legacy? So we understand that the three most important things of any sort of retirement plan before an individual is retired and how they could stay retired is by making sure they're having an income strategy, they're having an emergency strategy, and then they're also having a growth related strategy. If you set up your puzzle pieces the correct way, it could accentuate all your monies in that growth related bucket and you could maximize out some sort of legacy, some sort of inheritance to your beneficiaries or just make sure that you're creating your proper estate plan so that whenever you pass away, your spouse is okay. Whenever you and your spouse pass away, your kids or your grandkids or whoever you want left as your beneficiaries, they're okay. When you're leaving your money in your 401k, what's happening is those monies are just growing in a qualified retirement account. You pass away, whatever's remaining in there would just be fully taxable to your beneficiaries. So individuals that are feel it's important to leave some sort of legacy, leave some sort of inheritance and maximize that inheritance to their beneficiaries, they may want to consider a rollover and create some sort of strategic approach, some sort of strategy, some sort of plan to accentuate their growth and accentuate the benefits to their loved ones, the benefits as that sort of inheritance play. So I hope that you found some value in this video. If you would like to speak with one of our advisors, you could, and I tried to make things very simple for you, you could obviously call the 1-800 number up on the screen, 1-800-566-1002, ask to speak directly with an advisor at your preferred date and time, or what I did was I included the link for our specific appointments in the description of this video. So make sure to go to the description of the video, click on the link, and then you could schedule your specific date and time. And what we're doing is we're offering you guys a 20 minute complimentary phone appointment uh, to speak with one of our advisors. So what you'll do is just click on your preferred date and time, input the video that you saw on YouTube that you wanna discuss that specific topic, and we'll make sure that the correct advisor is matched up for your specific needs. I wanna thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you can have access to the most updated videos. Thanks so much, guys.